In this lesson, you're going to learn about the wrap feature. If you don't already have the engine open, open up the engine assembly from your infinite skills files folder called engine. The name of the assembly is engine4motion.sldasm. Once you have the engine open, let's open the oil pan part in particular. So just click on it and click the open part tool. In this part, we have some text that we've applied to the bottom curved surface of the oil pan. This text was applied using the wrap feature. You can find the wrap feature in the menus at Insert Features Wrap. You can also use Customize dialog to put it on your toolbars. Let's go through that quickly. You need to go to Tools Customize, which you can access through the menus or through the drop down on the Options icon. Customize. The Wrap tool is right here. You would just drag it and drop it onto your toolbar. Make sure you drop it onto a relevant toolbar. You wouldn't want to place this on the sheet metal toolbar, for example. Now we've already got a feature on here, but I'm going to create another one so you can see me do it from scratch and work along with me if you choose to. I'm going to sketch on the top plane. The requirement for the plane that you sketch on is that it should be either tangent to the face that you want to wrap onto or parallel to a plane that's tangent to the face that you want to wrap onto. You can only wrap onto cylindrical and conical faces. If you have a face, for example, with curvature in two directions, such as a sphere or a complex lofted surface, you will not be able to use the wrap feature to put geometry onto those shape faces. You can use regular sketch geometry or text to wrap around the surface. Let's get started. On the top plane, I'll open a sketch. And in this case, I want to put a series of circles. So I'm going to draw a line across here as a reference, and then another line, and another line. Set up the endpoints of the lines as symmetric. And then I'm going to use the perimeter circle. All right, draw a couple of circles. Using the tangent lines. Okay, this will work out well. All right, now I'm making sure that these circles kind of overlap onto the fillet down below because when it actually wraps, it will be shorter than it is right now. This is not projecting. It is actually wrapping the geometry. If it was projecting, then this circle would go down onto the fillet, and so would this large circle. So let's see how the wrap feature works now. Exit the sketch and start the wrap feature. There are three options with wrap. There's emboss, which means what we did here. The material actually stands up from the face. So you're adding material. There's deboss, which is the opposite. You make a cut instead of adding material. And then the scribe option simply splits the face with the geometry, whether that's sketch text or a series of circles that I've created. In this case, I'm going to do a deboss to show a different process from what's already been created with the emboss. And the selection box here wants a face to wrap onto and it needs a single face. You can't use multiple faces for the wrap tool. Notice that the circle stays on the cylindrical face and 
This one may not, which is why it's not being shown. The thickness is the depth of the cut in this case, or the height of the material, and pull direction is optional. Let's create the feature without it first, and then go back and add it. The source sketch should be obvious. All right, now when I click the green check, SolidWorks did not create the large circle. This is probably because it overlapped too much. Let's go back and edit the sketch and fix the situation. Let's start by clamping down this line and then dimensioning an angle. Okay, now with this defined better, now SolidWorks is wrapping the series of circles onto the face. But if we zoom in to look at this closely, you notice that this face is remaining perpendicular to the main face. So the face that was created with the cut is perpendicular to the main face. That may be what you want. But if this is a casting, we want the face to be parallel to a direction of pull. Or ideally with some draft, but we don't have that option with the wrap tool. We just have the direction of pull. So if we go back in and identify the pull direction, we'll specify the top plane. When we recreate the feature, and zoom back in, notice that these faces all go straight up and down the same direction as the faces of the lettering so that it can be pulled out of a mold or a cast. And that's the wrap feature.